Good evening, everybody, and how are we all doing today? This is another Sunday night live show from the Podding Shed. My name's Richard, in case you don't know, and uh, we're here to chat about gardening. Just looking at the screen, making sure everything is looking good. So what are we going to be talking about today? Today, I want to talk about what your gardening hacks are. Uh, you would have heard, if you've heard to the, on the podcast earlier this week, came out Monday as always, you'd have heard me talking about some of the hacks that I use quite often. And uh, I thought it'd be a great chance to find out yours. But before that, we'll go through what I've been up to over this last week, give you a chance to let me know what you've been doing as well. But first, let's see if anybody is actually out there. And yes, I can see lots of comments already. We've got Adrian saying hello. Good evening to you. Bally Silly and Allotment Man. Good evening, Richard. Adrian, just home from the allotment. Looking forward to tonight's show. Lovely to see you. Did, did, did Idaho Garn Girl. Hello, Richard and everyone in the chat. Um, did you all send Richard a picture of your garden allotment? I did. Yes, we've had a few come in. I'm looking forward to uh, going through that in just a moment. Um, Oh, uh, Idaho, I took the advice in last week's chat, and I'm going to take a picture from the same spot every week. It'd be great to see the progression, indeed. Did, 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 Oracle is out there. Hello, how has everyone been? Good evening to you. Did, 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 Digwell is out there when it comes up. Any second now. There we go. Hi, all back in a bit, just potting the plants to bed. Lovely to see you. Rebecca is out there. Good evening to you. Hope you are well. Who else have we got? Hargrave Gas is out there. Good evening to you. I uh, hope you've all had a good grown week. Indeed, we have. Richard Golden, good evening to you. Jenny Hallett, hello, everyone. I hope everyone is well and had a great week. Good evening to you. Did Turbo Stream is out there. Good evening to you. Anna Jones, good evening to you. Um, let's just scan through if I missed anybody. Richard Masterson, lovely to see you. Good evening, fellow gardeners from Providence RI. Uh, is that the Republic of Ireland? Forgive me, I'm not too uh switched on at the moment. Margaret Peacock, good evening to you. Uh, Stuart Jackson, good evening to you. Um, who else? So we got somebody in the Facebook group. Unfortunately, if you're watching in the Facebook group, I may not see who you are. It just comes up like this. But good evening to you. If you can just let me know your name at the end so I can address you personally. Uh, Graham Arnold, good evening, everyone. I hope you all had a great week in the garden. Good evening to you. Da, 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 da. Uh, the Facebook group, sadly, not done much in the allotment this week. I've got a problem with my hate, so I've had to test it, which is really boring. Indeed, I know that feeling. Stuart says, I've been in the garden today potting out my runner beans. Yes, I'm getting better. Thanks for all the positive comments. It means so much. Well, it's lovely to see you out in the garden and enjoying yourself. Uh, I Oh, Philly SBB is there as well. Good evening to you. All right, so the phone line is open if you want to call in 07307 135 174. So what have I been up to? this week um it's been well let me let me start with something i want to discuss about last week i mentioned you may recall i mentioned the blackberries that were ready on my allotment i've picked a load and i've got a couple here just to show you what they are actually looking like i think they look pretty damn good they're good sized blackberries but this is the beginning of July. These are incredibly early. What do they taste like? Oh, God. They're so sweet. They're delicious. Absolutely delicious. Um, fantastic. Yeah. Nice early blackberries. I think we said last week I was probably the only person to have early blackberries. But um, I am not complaining because they are absolutely delicious. Now, uh, I'm going to munch on it, finish these off. While I, while I was um, while I was going to say Thursday, I was up at a garden trade event up in Birmingham. Had a great time. And I've been given a, a few products to try out. So one of the products I've got is this load of wool. You're going to hear more about this on the podcast tomorrow. But basically, this is um, it can be used in hanging baskets or starting seeds. 
uh, so that we can it's it, a bit more natural a bit more of a nor, more natural product biodegradable we'll see how it gets on and and you can hear more about that on the podcast tomorrow another product that i've been given which i'm a bit unsure of are these sort of fabric pots they look great they're made from recycled materials and they can go in the ground etc etc my slight problem I have with them is they are made from recycled plastic bottles. Now, I like the idea of the fact that they are recycled, but I don't like the idea of them deteriorating in the ground. So I'm a little bit hesitant with that, but uh, it's given me something to think about. Now, Friday, I had a day off work. I did go to the allotment, did a bit of weeding, hadn't been down there all week, so I uh, needed quite a bit of weeding. I tidied you up, harvested some more potatoes. We got black currants, blue, red currants, gooseberries all coming in and absolutely delicious. And then today I've been at home and again, much of the same, just tidying up and uh, getting everything looked after and into good order. So, what about yourself? What have you been up to in your own allotments and your own gardens? Let's uh, go back to the comments and see what um as everyone is saying so jenny is saying oh my goodness i forgot to take a photo i'll take one later yeah no worries i, I knew that might happen i've got to try and remind people haven't i but uh yeah we'll try and take a photo each week and create a or each week or each month depends on how often you feel you can do it and we'll try and build a portfolio a flick book to go through at the end of the month the end of a year sorry uh toby stream I, I took a photo but forgot to send it in darn it don't worry there's always to ne next time or you can keep hold of it and and save it for the end of the season of course uh, digwell back is back we've had a blight warning so i've just sprayed the spuds and tomatoes what have you been spraying your spuds and tomatoes with uh we haven't had a blight warning yet but um that's quite interesting uh richard vibes good evening to you hope you are well lovely to see you uh, guessing our eye is Rhode Island, USA, of course. Of course it is. Sorry, I was a little bit slow there. Uh, Beatrice, we've got a video coming up a bit later from Beatrice. Good evening to you. Uh, it's Kate Spat with the dodgy hip in the Facebook group. No problem. Um, at least we know who it is now. Uh, good evening from my dad. Need more rainwater. Butts are going down. Yeah, we do need rainwater. It's getting a bit desperate now, isn't it? Um, Andrew Noyce is out there. Hi all. Now the show has started. That's a sign to leave a garden and go indoors. That's the idea. Gives everyone a chance to take a break. With these nice evenings, it's very easy to forget to uh, to to take a break every now and then, isn't it? Uh, Graham Arnold, blackberry and apple crumble with custard. Delicious. I tell you what, these blackberries would taste delicious in a crumble. They're so tasty. Absolutely tasty. Uh, Beatrice is saying, where do you get the warning from? There's a website. I forget the name of the website. I'm sure Digwell will answer that a bit later. But there is a website. If you put your address in, they will email you when there is a blight warning in your area based on local uh, weather conditions. I highly recommend you do check that out. Toby Stream, this week I sowed a row of peas and beetroot. Harvested a few ball greens, peas and beetroot. Mostly bean weed and still. I prepared a veggie mash ready. Veggie mess, excuse me, ready for the Swedes to go out soon. Swedes, I've got to sow some Swedes soon. Uh, Jenny says, my hack that I learned from Anne-Marie Powell uh, to have ready cut lengths of twine in your pocket so you can tie in as soon as you see a plant needs it. Good idea. Very good idea. I used to, I don't know if I've still got it. I used to have like a, a um, uh, thing, a bum bag type thing i would wear around me that had somewhere i could just pot twine to come out and cut it as i need it um good but good idea good idea rebecca i've been going around some open gardens really enjoyed looking at what other people do in their gardens even allotments on the tour which i loved looking around so many good ideas yes uh, i let i got to admit i'm one of those i'm just looking at it is the camera dropping yeah, looks like it might be slightly dropping. I saw that out in a minute. Um, I do love, as you know, I do love going around other people's gardens and especially stately homes and garden shows just to get some ideas and see what is happening in the world that everyone else is doing. And I think it's a great idea for inspiration, isn't it? If there's a garden open day, I thought about opening my garden up for the garden open days. Um, 
just not brave enough yet. But one year, I might actually open my garden up for the garden open days. And also have a look around and see what everyone else is doing and get some good ideas that I can use in my garden. Jenny, also a jar of water for tomato suckers, cuttings, etc., to stop dehydration. There we go. <laughs> There we go. There we go. Uh, Digwell says Blight Guard is what he's um, spraying his potatoes and tomatoes with. And Jenny says, I had potato blight gutted. Oh, it's such a shame, isn't it, Blight? It's one of those worst. Um, I think it's one of the worst uh, things that decimate our crops. Ian Bedo says, evening all, good evening to you and Stuart. Well, I have picked red and black currants and pulled up the broad beans and replaced that with runner beans, French beans to pot out this week. Busy, busy, busy. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a good chance, you know, there's still plenty of seeds that we can sow, as I said, swede, beans. And as uh, spaces are becoming empty, we might as well fill them up with more of our crop our plants so i'll be getting broad beans and peas into various places and get kale in just plenty of things that we can do beatrice says we have had lots of rain in the northeast this week the sweet corn has grown over a foot in three days can you send some of that rain down south please we haven't had rain i can't remember when we last had rain um and we haven't had a good rainstorm for a while um it does need it he and Benno says, maybe I am growing as the camera. To me, the camera looks like it's dropping slightly. I know why I did change something earlier, so that's why. This week, I need to catch up with more weeding. We have had an allotment day, open day next Saturday, so I want it looking half decent by then. I think these allotment open days are becoming more and more regular or more and more fashionable, aren't they? Ours does one every now and then. Um Oh, I meant to say, actually, no, uh, my allotment, we were having a road built by the side of it, which I wasn't a bit unsure about how it's going to go. It opened up this week. It doesn't quite go all the way to where it's meant to go. It's a bit of a road to nowhere at the moment. It takes you to a building estate that's still being built. But it's opened up, and I've got to say, it's pretty pleasant, actually. There's not a huge amount of cars up and down it, and the cars that are up and down it aren't making too much noise. Um. So I'd be interested, as I said, with this uh, new garden opening, this new road opening up, what happens with it? Uh, Digwell says, blight cast for blight warnings, best I've found. So tap in blight cast if you are looking for uh, blight warnings. Uh, Graham Arnold says, I picked some beetroot today. Variety Pablo F1, highly recommended. Delicious, 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 delicious. Um, has anybody had much success? You know the Chogia beetroot, the red and white striped one. I think they look beautiful when you harvest them, when you cut them. But as soon as you go and cook them, that red and white just seem to intermingle into one colour and become that red beetrooty colour, which uh, I think it kind of ruins the novelty of the beetroot in some ways. Has anyone found a way of net not getting the colours to bleed into each other. Uh, Beatrice has came in and said, the site I am on has stopped open days, only friends and family allowed at events. Too much hassle and risk assessment to do to open to all. Yeah, I can see that being a problem. And I did wonder as well, you know, opening my garden up to the public, would that lead it to more risks as well? Um. Digwell says, yeah, corn rocketed on. I had to remove the mesh, but they are big enough now to withstand the pigeons. Oh, why did I say that? He's just jinxed himself. Next week, he'll come here and say the pigeons have now just uh, eaten his corn. Again, I looked at my corn earlier. It's growing. It's just not growing very, very fast at the moment. I'm expecting it to suddenly just shoot on. But we need some rain. We really, really need some rain. Uh, Digwell says, don't bother pickling the chugia. Have you got a story to tell us there, Digwell? Um, and Beatrice saying that if you open via the yellow book scheme, they cover you. Interesting. As I said, I don't know if anybody has ever opened their actual garden up to the uh, open days. It's something I keep thinking I might do. Just got to get my garden into a good state before I even do that. Now, as I said, I have been lucky enough to be of to have been sent 
a video from Beatrice. And I think this is a, just a good time to show it off right now. It's a great video, I've got to say. Hi, everyone. God, it's about time I did a video of my plot. I'll just take you down each side. I've got onions and sprouts, cauliflower and calabrese. Then here I've got arches with beans climbing up and a bed of peppers and tomatoes. One courgette plant. Another bed of tomatoes and these beans on this arch are Greek gigantes. Here I've got a plum tree and a pear tree. A row of raspberries. And then these are my buckets of potatoes. There's about 15 buckets there, but none of them are ready yet. They were a bit late going in. Then this is a bit of a overgrown area. It's currently got five black currant bushes in. A cherry tree that had one cherry on and the bird got that. And then this area, I've started covering it at the moment. It's got pots of strawberries on and some blueberries and gooseberries. But I'm going to take two of the black currant bushes out and I'm going to put these plants in this area with the black currants. And I've got lots of baby currant plants that will also be shared out amongst my friends and I'll probably keep one of each variety for myself. This had onions in and the last few are going to seed. This is my compost area and working area. So this is where I've got all my things to put on and it's a bit of a mess. I've got a grapevine there that I was going to experiment with and put in at the other end of the plot because the other end of the plot gets all the sunshine. And this is my little nursery with all my seedlings with plants ready to go in when other stuff comes out. My little shed area and I've got a little seating area. This was my garlic bed. And I did have a bed at the other side, which I moved because this area is quite overgrown. So I'm going to clear this area and I'm going to move the bed that was the garlic. I'm going to change it round so it's facing the other way. This bed had my broad beans in and some early peas and the grass has taken over so it's got to be weeded. This is currently got tomatoes in and salad leaves and some up and coming spring onions and a red coloured lettuce that I need to thin out. Lovely rhubarb patch. And then I've got another apple tree, which is was really overgrown and we trimmed it back. So now it's looking quite good. And there's quite a few apples on it this year. Then I've got blueberries and they're all in pots. And this is the first year I'm actually going to get a crop of blueberries off them. But I've put them on black trays so that the rainwater is kept and they're not drying out as much. I think I've had a problem with keeping them watered in previous years. This is my brassica bed that I've just planted up. It's got kale, red cabbage, 
savoy cabbage and some more cauliflowers in and then this is my carrot bed i've got six rows of carrots in there all at various stages and then this is my sweet corn and it has grown with the rain we've had the last few days it's grown by over a foot in height so i'm well pleased with that the last bed is my i'm trying asparagus and i have some crowns in some of them seem to have taken and some haven't so we'll have to wait and see whether it's worth the wait for them so thank you this is my little piece of heaven in the northeast of England. Bye. Oh, 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 oh sorry, slightly, slight, slightly behind on the uh, switch over there. What a great looking plot, I've got to say. Absolutely beautiful and lovely to see. Something uh, I was thinking of as I um, was listening to that and watching that. Uh, Beatrice mentioned about the, I think it was a red currants in the area. It's a bit overgrown. This is funny enough a problem that I've noticed on my allotment as well. I've got this, I've inherited these couple of areas on my plot that had things like currant bushes and gooseberry bushes. And I've never been able to tidy them up. I've never been able to clear the weeds out underneath. And I'm starting to think I need to start again with those areas. Has anyone ever had any uh, thoughts on that or had to think about how to start again? Anyway. What we want to talk about tonight, gardening hacks, if anybody has any gardening hacks. I've, um, uh, where was I going to say? I, I put the podcast out the other day on Monday, and in that I shared 10 of my own gardening hacks. And I had a great response, actually. Now, my gardening hacks were pretty easy. If you haven't heard it, I'll try and remember what they were off the top of my head uh we had use a pencil on the labels buy the labels cheap use a piece of pipe to go through your hedges and your bushes to get the water down right down to the beginning right down to the ground sorry um i've forgotten them all i can't believe i've forgotten them all i i, I meant to have written them down ready um but you get the idea any gardening hacks that you have like that that will really help in many of the others uh on the comments graham is arnold's uh, that graham arnold is asking has anyone tried rhubarb and ginger jam going to try a recipe yes i have it's absolutely delicious the two flavors complement each other really really well Stuart says my sweet corn is very slow but I'm sure they will catch up if we get some rain we do need rain excuse me we do desperately need rain uh Digwell I pickled a lovely mix of chalkier yellow red and white beetroot and they all ended up red in the jar I said there was going to be a story there didn't I I said there was going to be a story and uh, yeah I'm trying to find a way to stop that from happening so I find a chalkier always seems to just bleed the red bleeds into the white when cooking uh, rebecca says what a lovely pot for um, beatrice's plot it was indeed a lovely uh, and jenny says that sounds delicious to Gra graham uh, jenny asks if i grow rhubarb from seed how old is the plant when you can start to harvest it i want to grow champagne variety but i haven't found the crowns for them uh, I'm going to say you can start to harvest it after, about a year after it's planted, but just don't harvest it all in a large, large amount. Give it a chance to sort of build its energy up and get its stores to go through the winter. Once it's two, three years old, you can really then start to harvest it. Rhubarb is incredibly, incredibly uh, hard, hardy. I used to have rhubarb grown in my parents' house and my stepdad just run over it with a lawnmower whenever he mowed the lawn, it would still grow back. But one person who I'm sure has got some stories to share with us is this guy, Mr. Stuart Jackson. Hello, buddy. Good evening. How are you? How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine, mate, now. Slowly getting there. Slowly getting there. Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, I, I had three quarters of an hour in the garden this morning, which made me feel a lot better. 
Excellent. So you're, you're, you're on the mend because you've just been in hospital recently. Yeah. Just explain to everyone. Yeah, I had, I had to have a little op and, um, about a month ago. And they lied. They said two to four weeks, and it's I'm in week five now, and I'm still struggling a bit. But I just... Just plod on, just plod on. I, my wife's looking after the garden, so it's good. So yeah, I'm not. Well, you make sure I'm you quite take lucky. Care of yourself, and you take it easy. Oh, yeah, I will. Indeed, yeah. indeed. Yeah, I. I indeed. It's sort of hacks is one of my things. I, as you probably you, you're aware, I don't spend a lot of money. Um, I use yogurt pots for labels. Um, I use paper mm -hmm. pots. You know, like newspapers, I even use junk mail. I don't care. I don't care what the paper looks like. I, I use it. Um, <laughs> and, like, when we get some rain, when we get some rain, I put buckets out and I collect the water because you can never have enough water for your garden. No, no. That was one of my mm, Yeah, your hacks really were good, actually. If your rain is coming, it makes sure... <laughs> yeah, make sure your water butts are, or fill your watering cans up to fill it and get more room in your water butts. Yeah, well, we were forecasted rain yesterday and today, and I think if we've had more than 10 minutes, I'd be lying, I think. It's... Yeah, yeah, this is the same problem we've had. We've, we've, we've had a bit of rain overnight, I think, last week, but not enough, nowhere near enough. No, I, I've had to do something I never do, and that's put the sprinkler on. I, I hate doing frozen. that. He's frozen, isn't he? Sorry, you no. I'm you frozen. Up there. Uh, it's all right. Yeah, I, I put the sprinkler on, and I don't like doing that because tap water is not the same as rainwater. No, no, it's not. It's not. You can tell there's a difference in the plants when they're fed by rain or water by rainwater compared to tap water. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My sweet corn are probably about a foot high at the moment. Um, yeah. we desperately need rain you know I yeah. can I can water it with the hose pipe and stuff but it it hasn't got the goodness in it has it that the rain water has is it me or you <laughs> I think we both went there we haven't, haven't yeah <coughs> yeah yeah but it's just it, it, I think going back to the hacks it's just don't chuck anything out. You know, margarine containers, ice cream containers. Use anything you can to yeah. to plant in. Yeah. Um, and I know you've done it. You you you've used um, plastic bu bucket um, meat plastic. You know the um, the, f oh, the polystyrene the, the boxes. Use, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Use those for starting leaks up and things. Yeah, and they do last more than a couple of seasons if you look after them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, I think there's a huge range of things that we can recycle and uh, reuse um, mm. if done correctly. I mean, those flower pots, I don't know if you saw at the beginning, the flower pots I've been given to trial, they've used shredded plastic bottles in them to build some these sort of flexible plant pots, but they're designed to go yeah. in the ground and degrade and i'm a little bit worried about doing that to be honest yeah it's it's a bit like putting plastic on the road isn't it, it it's got to go somewhere you know they yeah. do it they're trying around here they're trialing the new they're putting um pellets plastic pellets into the tarmac to make it yes. last a bit longer well where's that yeah. plastic going to go it's going to go into the verges into the into the surrounding area yeah. So I don't think that's the answer. You know, it you know, it might work. It might stay there forever, but is he frozen again? It's probably my Wi-Fi really. Really. living out in the <laughs> sticks, mate. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, it it's I don't know that I I don't like the idea of putting plastic in the ground. I'm I do use plastic buckets, but if I don't use them, they end up in the in the landfill. So I'd rather use them for five or six years before yeah. then they go there. Um, yes. But yeah. my favourite thing is the Ikea trays. You know, like the kids have, you you get like a step thing to go under the stairs with all the drawers in. Yes, I know what you mean. Yeah. 
and uh, round here people have got a bit more money than cents. And after a couple of years, oh, I don't want it anymore. I chuck it away. So I have the drawers, and I use them as watering trays. Yeah. So well, you just got to keep your eye on. That's another. Yeah, and I can get. Yeah, and you can use them for wicking as well. So you can drill holes in some. And because they stack, you can put the water in the bottom one and the plants in the top one. So then you don't overwater. Ah, that's a good idea. A very good idea, yeah. actually. Yeah. Yeah, I've been very lucky. I've got well, quite says, a few. I'm 20 miles from Stuart and it's goddamn. I'm froze oh. again. Yeah, yeah. Who's 20 miles from me? Digwell. Uh, Digwell is. And it's been yeah, twice he is. Week, on and off all week. Well, he can he can send it over here, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's because he lives in Gloucestershire and I live in Wiltshire. That's the difference. He's in the Royal County. Right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Mm. Yeah, I um, I just he's just he's just he can send it to me. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, the, I've got a question as well. So you might better help me. You might better help me if I'm not frozen. The leaves on my tomatoes are curling up. Have I pay overfed them? No, pay attention to something a little bit later on on that. And okay, in the, I will. In the photos. Okay, I will. I'll, anyway, I'll go and let you crack on. I think you're cutting, you're cutting in and out. Yeah, probably. It's the, yeah. it's the um, middle of nowhere Wi-Fi, mate. It's yeah. like for you people that live in big towns. <laughs> anyway, I'll speak to you town. soon. Yep, you have a good one. Cheers, Stuart. All right, cheers. Has he gone? Has it, what's happened? I'll, I'll, I'll boot him off anyway. I don't know what's going on there. Um, just seem to be really struggling. So apologies for that. Uh, I was, where was I? Uh, I was going through these comments. Um, oh my goodness, that garden looks gorgeous, Beatrice. Anna Jones, that looks fantastic, Beatrice. Graham Arnold, year after you plant it in your garden, Jenny. Yeah, uh, that was the question about the polenta harvest rhubarb. Uh, Jenny says, thank you, and you have a great plot, Beatrice. Richard says, Beatrice, that plot must really keep you busy. I, it certainly looks like it keeps her busy, doesn't it? Uh, thank you, everyone, from Beatrice. Toby Stream, lovely pot and fantastic accent. Thank you for showing us. Uh, not just Green Fingers UK blog, aka Lisa. Good evening. Lovely video slash allotment. Lovely to see you tonight. Lovely Beatrice from Digwell. And, um, oh, you said mulching as well. Yes, one of my hacks, it's using grass clippings for a mulch. I'm a big, big, big fan of mulching. Big fan of mulching um, since discovering it and just how good it is. It really does pay off. If you're cutting the grass, you might as well use those grass clippings as a mulch. Uh, may, made rhubarb and ginger jam last week. Delicious. Fantastic. I want some of that then, please, Margaret. Uh, Turbo Stream says, I started my fruit area from scratch this year. Hopefully the replanted gooseberries will start producing next year. Yeah, this is what I'm thinking. Do I start again or do I clear areas and start again? I'm, I'm wondering, wondering. Um, Digwell says, I did a marrow and ginger jam. Absolutely lush. Uh, we save all the wooden ice cream and lolly sticks to mark plants in pots that's a that's a very good hack isn't it the little lolly sticks so you put your pen mark on those and use those to labels very good very good hack uh turbo stream my hack when planting is to put a few chicken manure pellets in the in the hole and then top dress the surrounding soil with blood fish and bone good idea good idea um not lisa's asking i've got a question for everyone here it's not a gardening hack sorry has anyone had their committee pop their key deposit up not rents anyone know any rules around this as some people on our site are having to put their key deposits increased by 40 pound in january i've not known of that i've never heard of it i know we pay a key deposit when we first get our key and that's it and it was only something like a fiver or was it a tenner something like that not very much 40 pound 
seems a lot. Unless it's for a very good reason that people haven't been returning their keys, of course, or losing their keys. Uh, Jenny says, glad you are on the mend. Lots of coffee in a chair and rest up those to Stuart. Uh, second hack is to make blood fish and bone shaker. Take an old jam jar and few, drill a few holes in the lid and use it like a salt shaker for blood fish and bone. That's a very, um, very good idea, actually. I can't believe I didn't think of that. I used to use... Have I got any? Yes, I have, actually. One right here, he says, looking behind him. So this is bone meal I've got in here. Uh, and this is a juice container. And what I like about this, when I need to, to use it, it's just a case that I just walk around shaking it like that. Obviously a bit more turned out. But similar to the salt shaker, it just works so much better being in a, a, a juice container. Um, and doesn't leave your hands stinking afterwards either. Uh, the fisherman says, lots of rain lately in Wales, as usual. Um, I hear that. I hear that Wales gets a lot of rain. But I keep saying, please send it our way. We desperately need it here. Uh, Jenny, my co-op have offered a service to take back sail trays bed implants where we're in and the ones that they that die for a small donation to Air Ambo Box. I've now had a huge loads of large sea sail trays, strong and cheap. You know, I've got a huge collection of flower pots that I'm starting to realise I don't need anymore. They build and build and build, and I've got to get rid of them. A garden centre that I used to go to used to have a bin outside to pot them in, but I don't think they do it anymore, which is a shame because I think it's a good idea. I, I, I'd like to see these plastic pots not go to the, in the bin, but get reused where they can. The real problem with plastic roads, says Dig Wills, is when they dig it up for next time for resurfacing, it cannot be used a second time, must go to landfill. So all it is do, doing is delaying the issue. Yeah. Yeah, that is that is a real... I don't like things that only last once. Once I like everything to be reused. At least was asking about the keys. We don't have any keys, says Digwell. And Beatrice says, our key deposit went up to £15 last year when we had to get new locks. Interesting. I cannot remember how much I paid for mine so long ago, but uh, I, I believe I get it back when I if I ever leave the allotment and I have to hand the keys back. I also believe they use the same key, the same for all their allotment sites, so I could actually have access to a lot of allotments if I wanted to. Uh, so continuing on with that gardening hack, I did like did like <laughs> um, a, a Turbo Stream's idea of the salt shake. Like I say, I use the juice containers, which work very, very similar. Now, Digwell's just reminded me of one of my favourite hags. Plunge your gardening tools in a bucket of damp sand to clean them. That's, some add old engine oil, but it's not very green. That is actually a hack that I talked about on the podcast that I do. Sand, but I use old vegetable oil, cooking oil. Um, like, I mean, we don't have a deep fat fryer anymore, but I used to use the oil out of that to, when I changed out the oil, poured that over the sand and plunged my tools into that sand and oil mix, cleaned my tools and kept them oiled, which means they last for a very, very long time. And actually, I think this is a great hack because it's so convenient. Uh, can allotment sites offer a pot drop space? Drop what you don't need and grab what you do. The, I think that's a great idea. I wish allotments would do that. But the trouble is um, some people tend to use it as a dumping ground. We have at the entrance to our allotment, we quite often find stuff that has been dumped for people thinking they're doing the right thing. Uh, Nicola's joined. Good evening to you. Sorry she's late. Owen Geek. Geo Gigan, I hope I've pronounced your surname correctly. Sorry. My gardening hack is to generously feed my rhubarb crowns once a year in early spring with a mixture of granular fertilizer, fast release, and blood, fish, and bone, slow release. I've had my best harvest. Now, that's a very, very good idea, actually. Um, very good hack. 
Um, what do you use for your fast release granular fertilizer? Any particular brand? And I'm asking this because my rhubarb on the leaves has started to go a bit of a crispy brown, and I'm a bit unsure what's happening. I've added some chicken manure pellets to help them out. Uh, I'm going to add some blood, fish, and bone at some point as well. Um, so like that idea. Still quite dry here in Birmingham, says Turbo Trim. We've had a few hours of light rain yesterday, but only dampened to service. Me, my reinstalled water butt needs filling up. Don't ours all. Don't ours all need filling up. Chili Kate's joined. Good evening to you. Hello, all. Sorry I'm late. I tried to get back to the allotment from the allotment by six, but I always just find one more job to do. I know how you feel. I know how you feel. It's a difficult one. What sand is best to use for a tall bucket hack? So I used uh, building sand personally because it was convenient and I had it around. Um, uh, I think building sand is pretty good or a very coarse, um, a coarse sand. I forget what it's called, but something that's going to real get some grit in. Uh, same as you're watering with a pipe hack, use a length of pipe to get granular fertilizer into the bushy or crowded area. Just point the pipe in the right area and drop the feed in. That's also, yeah, I didn't think of that. Um, so what, what uh, Digwell's alluding to, uh, one of my hacks is, uh, I think I said this at the beginning, I take a pipe and I push that into my gooseberry bushes, for example, which are quite thick, quite a bit of thorns in them. And then I pour water into that PVC pipe to get the water to the roots, to the ground. Digwell's taken that a step further by adding granular fertilizer, which I'm thinking, great idea. I'm going to use that as well to, to improve upon what I already do. Ballycillian, yes, Jenny, our allotments have an area where you leave unwanted pots, etc., for, for new allotment holders to use. I think it's a good idea. Good idea indeed. Beatrice, we used to have a place for swaps, but everyone's just dumped their rubbish there. That's what I was worried about as well. Uh, Idaho says that's a good idea to Owen. Um, and Bally Soon says, plastering sand is good for the hack, nice and sharp. Plastering sand. I didn't know, I'll be honest, I didn't know there was such a thing as plastering sand. So uh, good to know. I use Duff General granular fertilizer as it's the only one i could get my hands on this season ah good enough good enough i will have a look out for that and see what we can do um jenny says glad some allotments offer space for plant pot swap i wish our allotment would do that more wish our allotment would do that more but like i say i think we do have a, like a shop open on a Sunday, but I do think that our allotment would become a dumping ground, this area, if it was reused like that. Now, what I remember, please do give us a like. Please do give us a thumbs up. Please do give us a follow. Please do give us a subscribe. And don't forget to click the notification to know when we go live. We usually always go live at 6 p.m. on a Sunday anyway, but this way you get notified. Um, so what other hacks have we got? One of my favorite hacks uh, is I measure the length of my tools and I use that as a guide for planting out plants. And the example I use is when I plant out my garlic. I know my trowel, the, the actual metal bit on that is 12 centimeters long, which is the same size as about the distance between each garlic clove. So instead of having to grab a tape measure or trying to work out, you know, no, I don't care how good you are at guessing or measuring things, you never be that good and things do become apparent. 12 centimeters works really, a, a, a tool measured to, or knowing the measurements of your tool, just works nicely. Now, I've seen people take that a step further and they've taken a hoe handle and they've put tape on it at certain marks to use in the same way. Just a little time saving tip there that I think works quite well. Uh, Bally Simeon, yes, Richard, you can't plaster with building sand. It's a pit sand. I didn't know, know that. Did not know about plastering sand. So I've learned something there. Um, Plastering is an art, in my opinion, anyway. Uh, but people now offer items on Facebook group, and if no one wants them, they have to dispose of them themselves. 
that's what always worries me is the disposing of them ourselves. Like I've got, as I said, so many plant pots behind this wall in binfuls, but I cannot get rid of them because, excuse me, I, I know they're just they're just still useful. Um, I probably should put them on Facebook Marketplace and see if anybody will take them when I have a good clear out because it's becoming apparent I don't need so many. Very apparent I don't need so many. Um, yeah, let's continue on with these hacks. Now, we're, funny enough, we were talking about plant pots there. And this seems like a good, I guess it's a hack. So a few years ago, and this is hard to do in reality when you're a hoarder like me, because I end up hoarding on to everything. But um, I try to keep the square pots not the round ones the square pots because i find that they are easier to store uh, the round pots i feel it's just a little bit of wasted space between them yes they stack up inside themselves but when you put them on a shelf there's space in between them it gets wasted the squarer ones bit more useful space they take up more room and therefore don't waste as much space Little hack that I thought I might just throw out there. Toby Stream, our sharing bench is behind my shed. It's now full of pots. Perhaps I should just try and offer them out. Digwell says, a basic one, but plant out your seedlings at least as far apart as the width of your house. Similar to my hack there. Indeed, similar to my hack. Um, measuring your tools, you know, makes hell of a difference when it or makes it so much faster and easier to plant out your plants at the correct distance apart. Uh, Jenny says, I often direct sow in odd lines and curves to fit around what is growing in my pots. I direct sow and then lay the seed packets on top of that row. When I've finished, I photo so I can label. And that's a good idea, actually, the taking of photos, because I'm, I'm pretty good at labelling all my plants up, all my annual plants, that is. My... Um, my my particular like i know let's take my raspberries i planted a load of raspberries autumn same and there were two different varieties can i remember which varieties are which no i cannot and this is something i'm thinking i need to try and adjust in the future uh, make some labels but taking a photo with that label works a bit better doesn't it you've always got that we've been talking a bit about taking photos haven't we um and sharing with everyone how our gardens and our allotments progress over the years by taking a photo each week uh belly said i richard in work tape rules are always broken i bring them home and screw the first eight foot off then onto my eight foot beds as a spacing guide in Richard in work, tape rules are always, oh, uh, tape rules, yes, measuring rules, yes, with you, with you, um, oh, tape measures, I call them, yeah, they, always, they do have a tendency to break, they do have a tendency to break, oh, so you take those, I'm with you now, I'm with you, so you take that eight foot, that first eight foot, 2.4 meters and you screw that onto your beds uh, so your measures are always alongside the beds with you can you share a photo of that at some point that's very very interesting uh square pots are better for roots of plants too that i think there's a bit of debate on that i think they're better but there is a bit of debate on that uh, I love that idea from Ballycillian. yeah i like that idea take an old ruler take an old tape measure and screw that down alongside a bed to get i really like that idea i'm gonna have to go and um buy myself a lot of cheap tape measures and do that because i can see that working really really well on a lot of my beds at the allotment particularly i like that idea a lot a hell of a lot a real lot has taken my entire measuring system up another level. So you, I can guarantee you, Bellison, please do share some photos of that. I will be doing that. Um, I'm sure we can get some cheap tape measures somewhere. Um, yeah, yeah, I like that idea a lot. Anybody else got any other hacks? Uh, Ian Berto says, 
the maker of yardsticks are not going to make them any longer. <laughs> oh, there's always Ian, isn't there? There's always Ian in with a joke. Uh, Alison O'Brien, evening all. Hope you are well. I'm really pleased to see my potatoes are growing. I used potatoes that I had indoors from a supermarket. I've just planted them in big pots. Fantastic. It, it all depends on the results. But I, I'd be interested to know just how well they perform, of course. But it's great to see that they've used up what you have available. I marked up a length of pallet wood and made a planting marker for spacing, showing, sowings out. For spacing sowings out. Yes, I've heard that. It's similar to using um, a hoe, uh, a bit of pallet wood, certain measures in it works lovely. Uh, dig well, you could sow a groove in the wood side of the bed every inch. That is, that's also a good idea. And that's very true, Digwell. Yes, indeed. I do like these ideas that are coming in. There's some great ideas. I've got to say, some really great ideas coming in. Now, I want to quickly go through some of the photos that have came in this week. Uh, as you can see here, um, let's go to the first one. Stuart Jackson and his Tabry bush. Uh, I don't know if you can see it that well in this picture, but you can just see them starting to show themselves on his plant. Next, we spoke about this last week. Stuart Jackson and his school has been preparing some of these shopping baskets and shopping trolleys for show gardens. And I could say they do look fantastic. Really good. Now, Beatrice Collins, we saw her video earlier, shared this picture of our allotment. So you get a good idea of the size. This is going in with what we were saying earlier about taking a picture each week to see the difference. I didn't do it myself, so I'm just as bad. Uh, and this is another shot. I do love Beatrice's allotment. It looks absolutely stunning, really tidy, and, and full of lots of vegetables. Uh, this is her garlic harvest as well. Now, a lot of people have had trouble with garlic this year, and I put it down to the very dry winter we've had here in the UK. Um, my garlic hasn't been too bad, but I think it could have been better. And a good mulch has made all the difference. Uh, Steve, a.k.a. Digwell Green Fingers, has had his tomato plants are starting to curl. Stuart said this on the phone and I said, hold on for this. So uh, Steve has put this down. It's, the next one's a better photo. If I, oh, sorry. No, wrong one. Um, oh, let me go back a photo. Uh, where was it? There we go. That was it. Um, <laughs> as you can see, the leaves are curling in this, and he pots Steve pots this down to um, any more for I always struggle with that word poisoning from his compost. And this is brought in compost. I think Steve said his came from D uh, B and Q. And this is where garden waste has been used. Some of the plants may have been treated with weed killer, and it's left led, led to this. But Steve has also shared this photo looking down his plot to start off with this uh, idea as well. In Meadows, now the grandkids missed a pod from his hanging basket. His grandkids love his peas. So we managed to replant one to see what happens. And this is his hanging basket of peas. I'm interested to see just how well hanging baskets of peas work because I'm always told that they need to climb up. This seems that they work by climbing down as well. Uh, Kate has had this little garden helper in her garden. Lovely little ladybird uh, eating away at the uh, black fly. I was asked a question on this the other day, actually, about black fly ladybirds. Uh, Stephanie, uh, um, Idaho Garden Girl, sent us this photo from her location in Idaho of her garden plot as well. Looks fantastic, doesn't it? Lots of space there. Uh, very, very tidy and looking good. Thank you so much for your photos. Please do keep sending them in. It's always a pleasure to see your photos. In the Facebook group, we're seeing lots of photos go up as well. And lots of questions, actually. We've had somebody ask about the use of neem oil and various things like that. If you're not a member of our Facebook group, please do join in. Um, I keep an eye on everything going on, but I'm loving the fact that everyone else is helping each other out. 
Uh, back to the comments then. Uh, where were we? Bally Cillian says, tried that dig well, but the plank started to rotted in the grooves. Oh, so uh, dig well suggested cutting grooves in the wood, but they started to rot. I guess if you treat them, they might last a bit longer. Anne Wright says, when potting on different varieties of the same veg like tomatoes, I use different shape or colour pots for each variety, just in case things get moved or labels lost. That is a very, very good idea. I'm a big fan of labels, and I believe in writing new labels before you sow. But that extra colour just adds that different different um an extra layer of protection doesn't it i really like that idea actually uh jenny says i will be planting painting my wall next to the back door with chalkboard paint then i can note down when it is ready when reminders etc would work on a shed door as well i'm a big flat fan of blackboard paint or whiteboards as well i use whiteboards a lot but in our kitchen we actually have a wall tiny little wall to be fair but we painted that with blackboard paint and we write our shopping lists and what we have in 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 our fridges and freezers on that blackboard paint it's as uh idaho says that is a very good idea yep we 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 do that indoor wall or the inside of a door yeah i'm a big i, I like whiteboards i use those a lot but blackboard I was actually going to do that with a door I have here. I just never got around to doing that. Uh, that's a very clever idea, Jenny. Um, we we had a 48-inch rule in the sheet metal shop I used to work in, in Royal Navy. When I left, I cut the first inch off the rule. My mate made a shelf one inch short all round. I did tell him later. Oh, that was a crafty one of you. <laughs> That's very crafty. Uh, Adrian, I will post a photo of my plot, but it's not a pretty sight. doesn't matter if it's not a pretty sight. We want to see how it progresses. It will, however, make the others feel good on their site. Adrian says, Richard, where do I post it to? So you can send any pictures to me. Richard at the uk is my email. I'll paste it in the, post it in the Facebook group. I will see it in there or post it. Um, or via social media, however you prefer to send it. But you see, that curl happened to my potatoes once. I asked a farmer for advice. He said it had come from the horse manure I'd used as they sprayed the fields to cool something and was still present in the manure. Animal for the lids. I can never get my word, my mouth around that word. It's a type of weed killer. That uh, a broadleaf weed killer, if I remember correctly, that is sprayed on some of these fields and sprayed on in, uh, horses come along and eat it. it. Doesn't hurt horses, but it's still in their manure. It also lasts through the composting, um, the process. It's particularly nasty because it can still be in the compost when you use it, and it's really annoying. A lot of people have started when they try, particularly with peat free compost, they um plant out board beans as a tester to see if they emerge okay this to test that compost it's a lot of testing it's a lot of difficulty but you know what it's got to be done to make sure uh digwell when i was an apprentice they sent me to the stores for a long wait did they stand you there to did they leave you there for something like 20 minutes uh Amino pyra lead. Amino pyra lead. Animo pyra lead. I still can't pronounce it right, but it's the herbicide, the weed killer. I hate weed killer. I really hate weed killer. Don't use it at all. Which reminds me of that, one of my other hacks. Uh, weeds grown in your paths, in your driveways. Don't want to use weed killer. If you're like myself, don't want to use weed killer. But if you enjoy a nice cup of tea or cup of coffee, like myself, when I boil the kettle, there's always that little bit of hot water left in the bottom of a kettle. Take that out, pour that onto any weeds that might pop up in your, your patio, your driveway. It will kill off any of the... Uh, uh, it will kill off any plants. Obviously, don't do this in your vegetable patch because it will kill off your plants that you want to grow, but but, but it does kill off any in the patio just boiling hot water makes all the difference 
Uh, Nicola, I tried taking a photo of my allotment, but it didn't give me a good view of it. Well, keep trying. Keep trying. I'm sure you will get there in the end. Like I say, it's to to build up a, a, an idea of how it grows throughout the season. Stuart says, I have just made a watering system using a two litre milk bottle and some tubing with drip taps from for the greenhouse just to make it easier for the person who looks after my garden when I go away. This milk container will last a couple of days. <laughs> I I mean, I I like I like these ideas. I think they are great. And in fact, in my greenhouse at home, I've set up a solar powered watering system with its own water butt. And that waters, I don't have to worry so much about watering my tomatoes and my pots that are in there. And it does a much better job than what if I was trying to do it. Tomatoes that are grown in there, they are big, they are grown well. They're a little bit on the, the, the thin side, but they seem to be doing okay. Uh, Great Veg says, Army no Pyra lead. I'm trying. I'm really trying. Lovely to see you. Uh, Jenny says, we have a slaughter-free organic dairy near us, from near dairy farm near us. No chemicals or sprays, etc. I think I'll start gathering their bovine manure to avoid digested weed killers. Scary stuff. It is very scary. Um and it, and it just goes to show how easy it is to get into the systems. I was in the stores for an hour looking for a left-handed screwdriver. Here we go. Here comes all the comedians. Uh, Digwell says, health and safety executives state that manure or hay from farms where it must be used must not leave the farm. Yeah, right. Yeah, I know. It does happen, doesn't it? It, it? Regardless of what they say, it does happen. And it's quite clear it does happen because it's turning up in our composts that we are using. Um, and this is why I, I'm a big believer in trying to make your own compost as much as possible. Um, I can never produce enough compost, though. If anybody has found the key to producing enough compost, I've got several compost bins. I just can never produce enough. I try and produce it fast. So my idea being if I produce it fast, I can produce more of it. Still not enough. Just still not enough. Um, any tips, any hacks on how to produce compost or lots of compost? The hack that I do have for producing compost fast is to run over everything with a lawnmower. Obviously not bits of root and not seeds. But every foliage, certainly, you run over that with a green manure. It gets chopped up nice and small, goes into a compost bin or heap, and it gets heat, it heats up faster, which in theory should kill off any of our, our, um, our uh, weed seeds anyway. But it heats up faster and rots down faster just by being chopped up small. Adrian says, hay has always been traded between farms. So there you go. I think... I think hay is generally treated with weed killer as well because uh, they don't want it in the hay, quite understandably. Uh, Adrian is probably best to uh, advise on that with his farming background. Turbo Stream, one of my main reasons for direct sowing in the seabed was to avoid weed killing composts and to save the cost, of course. Of course. Yes, I like your seabed. I do like your seabed idea. Again, this is something we are possibly looking at trying to do in the future if we can uh, find the way of making a seed bed that will actually work well in our garden um but yeah i like that idea a lot i do like that idea a lot and it of course is avoiding compost which is in incredibly difficult to try and avoid the use of compost i spend a fortune um I spend a fortune on compost. It's probably my biggest outlay. Are ex are you know, probably more expensive than the cost of our allotment site, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I try and produce as much as I can. It's something I'm really trying hard to produce. There is one big YouTube channel that proclaims you can make usable compost in ten days. Digwell says with a uh, laugh, laughing emojis. I don't know who you're talking about, but the ten days. I'd love to see how well that works. I know some people have claimed that it is possible if you throw your weed materials in with your chickens, 
they will scratch around and they can produce compost quite fast. I've not found it that fast, not in 10 days. And even so, it's a lot of work to try and remove that compost from the chickens anyway. Uh, Jenny says, I really want to compost, but with the waiting to move house, I don't know how it could be moved. So frustrating as it's four years of waiting so far. Uh, da, 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 da. So here's my here's my thoughts on it. Do you really need to move the compost with you when somebody who moves into the garden could just take it on? Um, in, instead, and at least you'll waste, you could be, as you say, if you could be waiting for four years, you could be holding on for another four years, which you're wasting away all that possible compost. Um, so that's what I would say. Get making it, get your compost. If you leave it behind, you've not lost anything because it's just your waste materials. So put it to good use. The other advantage I find with composting, we do a lot of compost and we have a wormery. We have the underground compost as well. Is that <laughs> um, we don't throw so much away in our bins. A lot of it does get reused. Uh, Digwell says, illegal since 2009, if any, blah, 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 that herbicide has been used. What was that? Oh, hay. Hay has uh, the hay been traded between farms. So technically, that is illegal. I never knew that. Grow veg. If you want to get the heat going hot, hot and fast, take some foliage and stems of tomatoes, comfrey or potatoes, pot them on the soil near the compost heap and stamp on them. It gets the microbes growing. I've not heard that trick. I've never heard that trick, so that's an interesting one to uh, try out in the future. Uh, yes, as it's a housing association, only plants and trees can stay. But you can take the compost bin with you. Get a, if you get a Dalek one, you can take that with you, and just well, then if, if whatever's left when you move can go you have to take some tip or to the um dump before you move i'm sure you're going to get a bit of time before you're told to move um what i would say start making your compost now personally uh jenny does go on to say she will get a fine if she leaves her compost behind but what i would say start making your compost now get your get a dalek compost bin fill it up start producing it like I say, you, if you could be waiting for another four years, it seems a shame to waste that time. And then it, I'm sure you get a bit of time. I don't know how long you get noticed before you move, but I would imagine it's a bit of time. And then if that happens, then take your waste to the tip or um, use the, if they collect it, use that way. Um, it's just going to just gonna work. Maybe spread the compost under the bushes. Hide it this is uh, Idaho's idea. I, I I was thinking that as well. Hide it under the bushes, but uh, I'm not sure if that. I think we're talking more about the uncomposted material that might get left behind. Um, my gut is to say just start composting it up right now. Just get it into use. Uh, excuse me. Sorry. And just get it into use and ready to go. I'm going to have a munch on this. These blackberries are so nice. Is it? Is it just me that it's got blackberries this early though? I know we mentioned this last week. Um, I know we mentioned it last week, but uh, I, I don't know if I'm still the only person that's got blackberries. Idaho says, "Isn't the compost material a mulch?" It could be to the end of that, but. Um, Best to wear on the side of caution. Jenny could spread the compost on the beds before moving out. We'll look neat then. It would if it's compost. If it's composted down. I think if it's still in the uncomposted state, that's where the problem is going to be. But I personally would get it going. You know, you always take the uh, compost bin with you. Sorry, those blackberries are delicious. You always take that uh, compost bin with you, so it's always going to be used. Um, you could be waiting another four years before it goes. Anyway, uh, Turbo Stream says, my blackberries are only just flowering. This must be a really early variety. Uh, I don't get blackberries until September. 
Yeah. Nicholas says, get a hot composter to speed it up. I've spoken to the people from hot compost in. Um, trying to get one. Uh, one day I will get one. Good evening, Richard from Dave and Logan. Lovely to see you, Dave. Uh, well, yes, it does need to be broken down into compost. Yeah, it does need to be broken down. This is the point is that uh, I think what um, Jenny's worried about, if she starts a compost heap right now and then gets told she's going to move in two months' time, she's got to get rid of that material. But at the same point, you could be using that material now. That's where I would go. What about chop and drop, Jenny? No need for compost bins. Chop and drop. That's an, a permaculture method, isn't it? Where you literally drop whatever you've chopped in position where you've chopped it from. So let's say you pruned your apple trees. You just drop those prunings underneath your apple trees. I've heard of it. I believe it works quite well. I've just not been a fan of it myself. I've yet to try it properly, though. Put the uncomposted stuff down first and cover with a good stuff, like sweeping it under the carpet. <laughs> I like that idea as well. That is a, a very good idea, a very good little trick. Um, my blackberries are just starting to bloom also. Well, ours are out there. Must be a very early variety. Um, I'm going to have to look after that blackberry bush now. I was going to get rid of that blackberry bush, but those blackberries are delicious, so I'm definitely going to try and keep it going but we are got about 15 minutes to go for this uh this week's show so uh, what's coming up on the podcast tomorrow first of all you'll hear about the garlic experiment and you will also hear about from a company called haughty wool i showed you what they produce the hanging basket liners things like that made out of sheep's wool which as we know, sheep's wool has been a bit of a, uh, a, a difficult one for farmers to sell on. So this could be a good use for a waste product. Really interesting chat about that. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you guys. Next week, this came in from Ian Meadows. He wants to know a bit more about pruning and how you go about pruning. Being this time of year, we're going to be looking more at summer pruning. So... Um, be interesting to know all your hints and tips on pruning as well. If you want to send a video, head to wetransfer.com and go to and send it to Richard at the vegetroundpodcast.co.uk. That'd be great to get some pruning videos actually. If anybody is going to be doing any pruning anytime soon, uh, Jenny says, I can't leave beds, etc. I will get a pen and paper to have a think. I like hot composters, but they are a bit expensive. I can't, I can tip any compost any uncomposted in theory but mobility issues make that hard I, I was thinking about the mobility um i'm sure yeah yeah i'll keep thinking for you i will keep thinking for you i've got green fruit and my blackberries not ripe yet must just be me then uh oh i do like the idea of sweeping it under the carpet there we go Chop and drop, as I understand, is the same as using grass clippings as a mulch. That's sort of what, how I understand it, but I'm, I'm, I want to find out more about that. I have to look it up. Maybe the balmy south coast weather has given you early blackberries. Pineapples next. Well, I've never managed to successfully grow pineapples, but I know some of the stately homes around here have grown pineapples. That's Roxy, by the way. Um, uh, we've also had bananas growing outside uh, not far from me very very rare need a very good summer but we do have a pretty balmy south coast weather as uh, a digwell says it edwin says i just burned sheep's wool well perhaps we found somewhere you might be able to sell it on adrian so listen to the podcast tomorrow uh, i chop and drop but will up my game i've got to find out more about chop and drop bananas in little hamter mix so this is always makes me laugh that we we think it's so difficult to grow bananas in uh in the uk so the cavendish banana which is pretty much every variety of banana that we eat that was first bred in the uk um, and it was so successful was, the seed was transplanted around our world and pretty much every banana we eat 
started its life, the variety started its life in the UK. Um, it's not so unusual to grow bananas here in the UK. It's just you've got to put a lot of effort into the heat side of things unless you get an exceptionally good summer. I know nothing about it, but sheep get dipped. Would there be anything harmful in the soil to the soil in the wool? That's a good question. I didn't think to answer that, ask that, but that's uh, a question that we will. I'll, 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 I'll message. I'll message them tonight and find out. Actually, uh, Hugh Richards is a fan of Chop and Drop. Um, I'm sure, he is. I'll find out more about that. Sheep's wool can be used in compost bin. Yeah, it can be used. This is why <coughs> what caught my idea so much about using sheep's wool in hanging baskets and seed starting trays. Um, because they are biodegradable, they will rot down and, uh, and see what happens. Um, I hate waste. I hate waste. So the idea of using odd things yeah, for hanging baskets. Sheep's wool just seems to make it a little bit better. Talking pineapples, if anyone likes pineapples, try pineberries. They are delicious, aren't they? Just absolutely delicious. They're expensive and difficult to get hold of these days. And years ago, when they sort of, I won't say they first came out, but they were all the rave and they were all over the place. I got some a couple of years ago, but trying to find them nowadays is incredibly difficult to find pineberry plants. Um, I've got to get more. I want to get more because they are delicious. Uh, Nicola, does it not attract the rats? Talking about the composting. Anything will attract rats. Uh, that is interesting about banana varieties developed in the UK. A little bit of information. I bet nobody knew that. Uh, Monty Don uses his sheep flock fleeces in his compost bins. Yeah, I know, so I know uh, sheep's wool is in completely compostable. Um, this is why I'm really impressed with, I mean, this is, obviously, it's all wrapped up. It's made to fit 16, 14, and 12-inch baskets. I think, is there just a one in there? I'm not going to open it up just yet. Um, we'll probably save it for next year, that. But they also gave me a bag of some of the uh, sheets to try in a seed sewing tray, which I'm going to be, well, I'm, run an experiment on at the moment uh jenny says five pound for 10 roots end of sale season if they have runners i'm happy to share um yeah please do let me know where you get them from and beatrice says the range have pineberry plant now I'm, i've got to bite my lip a little here because i went into a range store a couple of months probably about the beginning of the month actually just thinking about that and I went into the garden area looking to buy some of their plants. And a lot of their vegetable plants clearly had not been watered. They were missing labels. They had not been discounted. They were dry. They were they were dying. They were dead. I was really disappointed in the range for that. That being said, that was just one store. I went to a few others and they seemed to be a bit better. But that one store was really disappointed in. I didn't buy any plants, but myself and a few others were having a good rummage to see what was there because we wanted to buy plants and they've lost out on all those sales and created waste material, created waste with all these plants that just were not cared for. I think it's the same as any of these cheap shops. You know, you've got to go in and look and see what is about and, and how it's been looked after. I'm a big how do I buy this? I've become a, appreciating garden centres a bit more in my later years. I used to run garden centres down a lot, but I've, I've started to appreciate them more because I'm realising they do have the experience, they do have the knowledge. Just sell a bit too much tat and non-gardening stuff in some cases, but they look after their plants. You know in a garden centre the plants are going to be really well looked after and in much better condition than somewhere like the range. Um, Wilco's B and M does B and M sell plants? I don't know. I don't think I've seen any plants in B and M, but I know certainly ones in Wilco are looking rather poor these days. Um, yeah, yeah. And again, that's something we could probably debate a lot about. Where do you get your plants from? Seed, 
or plant, buy from a garden centre. I'm going to seed plant debate. Get your plants from. I'm going to write that down on here. Get your plants from. That's something that we can talk about as a subject in the future. Uh, Marshalls, I got a white currant bear rooted as well. It's £15 for 10 pine brie roots. White currant bear fruit root and fast delivered, tracked by Marshalls. Brilliant service, all growing superb indeed. Some of the bigger garden centres will have plants that have gone over, set aside for charities and community groups. You just have to give them some TLC. Yes, I quite often do look in those bargain corners, as I like to call them, in the garden centres, because they have gone over. They are a little bit poor, but give them some TLC and they can recoup. But they're usually sold at a discount as well. In this case, this example in the range, like they had a tray of six pepper plants and there was three pepper plants in it and they were still selling that at full price. I watched an old video of Jeffrey Smith's vegetable garden last night. Last night, His tip was to pot a layer of manure at the bottom of a seed tray. The seedlings would root and get an instant boost. Not, not a bad idea, I guess. I've not tried that myself. It would have to be well rotted manure, of course. The Cavendish strain is struggling and under threat from a tropical race for a Panama disease. If no solution is found, they will die out. A victim of its own breeding, a triplade. Yes, that's funny enough. A, a couple of years ago, that's where I learned about the Cavendish banana uh, because it is because it's been monoculture in so many banana farms. It hasn't got a, this disease is wiping out the Cavendish banana. So they're having to try and find different varieties of bananas that are just as good, uh, but that tolerate this disease. And they're particularly looking at bananas from the Japanese region, the Musa varieties. But yeah, uh, interesting, isn't it? Interesting to learn about Cavendish bananas. This is something I, I, I'm a big, a bit of a history buff, a bit of a history fan. And I'm always impressed with what we can learn from the history of gardening that that surprises me and we learn from this day you know things like the history of the potato etc cetera, etc cetera, i always feel is so much which is why gardening needs to be taught more in schools but that's somebody else's debate uh mr smith's vegetable garden on youtube if anyone is interested that's jeffrey smith uh i'll check that out at some point Jenny says, I often look in home-based discount area. Perfectly healthy plants, but the staff member said they have a dated barcode like a sell-by date. Never heard of a plant with a sell-by date. What it probably is in places like home-based, where they, they've got to turn the stock around fairly quickly to get the new stock coming in. They don't want to sell. I mean, you never really want to buy plants that are in flower. You want it before they're in flower because you want to see the flowers. So they probably, when they're in flower, they need deadheading is when they, they feel the sale by date is. Uh, that's probably what it is. Uh, Digwell says, not advertising. Not, I don't have a problem with advertising anyway. But if anyone wants to see the effects of anime poor poisoning have a look at my last two videos today's upload has the legal gump at the end so if you are suffering with curling tomato leaves and it could be down to your compost check out digwell's last two videos and that might help you out a little bit more we've got five minutes to go the phone line has been open 073 if you want to call in and i'll just add the link if anybody does want to zap in i know less late in day it's rare for anybody to zap in but if anybody does the link is going up right now uh, graham arnold says going to harvest my onions some point this week do you think i could still get some leaks in <coughs> oh god that was a weird things sorry uh, i've got some in a pot i grew from seeds still left over from may yes you will have absolutely no problem getting those in the ground now they might be a little bit later on in the season before they are ready but i see no reason they will also need a lot of watering to get them in i'm pretty sure someone in my allotment has just planted out their uh, uh leaks as well so i certainly think get it in um one of the things that quite often when you, I was looking for ideas of what to, what to plant after the first early potatoes come out, and leeks was one of those that could go in after first early potatoes. So, yeah, no reason why that would happen. We have a caller. Hello, caller. What's your name? Where are you calling from? 
Hello, Richard. It's Nicola in Cornwall. Hello, Nicola. How are you today? Oh, yeah. I had a cat go missing who's now home with an injured leg. So, uh, oh. so hope the cat's OK or going to mend. Well, I don't know. It could be a strain. It could be something more, but I'm not doing a bet on a Sunday. He's getting about and he's eating. So. Right. Good enough. Good enough. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you calling in for today? Well, I tried taking a photograph of my veg garden. Uh -huh. And it's very hard because it's getting an angle that you can actually see it or a height that you can see it because it's part of my front garden. So it's not the biggest. It's not because obviously I haven't developed the second one yet. I haven't had the dip to do the terracing yet. But um, it just it just doesn't look like anything. Well, I don't think that matters too much because we want to see progress as it goes on throughout the the uh, the, the year. Um, but if you're having trouble, have you tried a, a long selfie stick? No, I haven't got a long selfie. The best I could do is a bamboo stick. Bamboo <laughs> stick. Tie it to a bamboo stick with a few cable ties. Set a timer. Yeah. And off you go. Right. I'm going to go at that. It's just I tried taking one from the patio, which is by the front of the house. Which yeah. is actually at the side, it gets very complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, the, my kitchen door faces the road, and the front of the design of the house faces the view, which is understandable. But I tried, it's like three foot above the, the height of the garden, and it just didn't really get you couldn't really see enough. Yeah, I'll right. post it in the Facebook group and um, go on from there. I yeah. didn't put any of my hacks in because I didn't know if they've already been mentioned in the first half of an hour that. Uh, well, we've, um, we've got about two minutes. People are starting to pack up. So if you want to get a couple of hacks in quickly, I'm sure they can... Uh... Old hose pipe for a seepage hose. You just put a few extra holes in it. Oh, well, that was a hack we didn't have. I like that idea. Yep. Um, so that's about it. But I just thought I'd phone and say hello because I'd missed... I hadn't called in for a few weeks, so... Yeah. Well, it's lovely to hear your voice as always. Anyway, I love you and leave you, and thank you for a lovely show again. No problem. You take care. All the best. Cheerio. Cheers. Bye. Bye. There we go. That was Nicola Cornish Heaven. So, uh, yeah, we'll just quickly finish off. So, Graham uh, Tabister was saying, Graham, I will be planting out a few late-sown leeks soon too. Uh, can I interplant leeks with swede? I think you could get away with that, but swede can get quite large, so just be careful. Thank you for tonight's advice and comments. Any portable compost ideas, please let me know. I will think on that, Jenny, and come up with something for you. Uh, Digwell says, see you next week, guys. Stay safe. Uh, Beatrice says, I haven't planted my leaks out yet. Job for this week. So, Graham, you're not alone. Jenny says, I can't get all my garden in, so I'm going to photo my growing arch as there's lots growing there. Uh, by Richard Nall from Adrian. Well, I think it is time that we did wrap up. So thank you so much for joining us this week. We'll be back again next Sunday at six, where we're going to be talking about pruning. And I want to share or hear some of your tips, tricks and ideas on pruning. Uh, this is to help Ian, who I think is a bit unsure about how to prune. So be interested to see what everyone says on that. Uh, I said on the podcast, Haughty Wool and Garlic Experiment results. Look, look forward to putting that out there. And I look forward to seeing you all again next Sunday. I've just realised I haven't set myself up for the leaving. There we go. Uh, Beatrice says, thank you, everyone, for a great chat. Thank you for your video, Beatrice. Another great episode from Idaho. Thank you for joining in. Bye, everyone. Great chat. Um, Bye, everyone. See you all next week. Stuart Jackson says, thanks for all your help this week. This week, I still have links to pot out. Great show. Well, with that, I'm going to love you and leave you. Thank you so much again. See you next Sunday, 6 p.m. <laughs>